Hey y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Show the end. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Hey y'all, this is April. And this is Caroline. This is your bloody happy hour. Thursday mm. edition. Thirsty Thursday. What you drinking? I have some leftover Bacardi coconut rum. Oh, and I have a ranch Rita. Ranch Rita. Also so we're so fun today. We're yeah. we're wild and crazy. And out of control. Mm. What's what's going on? What's the latest? Are you watching anything? We haven't talked about what we're watching in a while. Nope. I just finished part one of You. Did you ever write You? Watch You? Yes, I did. Okay. I just finished. Season one? Season four, or the latest season, but it's two parts. Oh. So there's a part one, and then that ended, and I think part two is coming out. Oh, it's like so many episodes in part one, and then so many episodes. Yeah. Oh. So I'm ready for that to come out, and um, that's it. I'm ready for the, if I've not told y'all already, it is... The 30th anniversary of Waco. David Koresh. Oh, we have, I don't think we have. Um, February 28th was the first day that the standoff happened. So, y'all, if you're just tuning in, we are a podcast out of Waco, Texas. And we were both alive when this happened. And I, I have to admit that I was never totally sure what really happened i just was never into cults i never did a deep dive into it but right now i'm reading a book my book club and there's a a new netflix series coming out next on the 23rd and we're also my book club is going on a tour of all the land down there because they're still active branch davidians they're still waiting for david to come out to come back like like christians know jesus coming back well, are, is Waco gonna back. blow up uh what, what's the anniversary date, the actual date? So it was a 51-day standoff. So the date was February 28th, but it was actually done April 19th to whatever oh, year that was, hell. 1993 or something. Um, yeah, 1993. So we are going, Caroline and I are going to watch the American Apocalypse. We are going to... Do a deep dive, and we're going to give you a multi-series episode on that. So, rewatch? Yeah, like a rewatch of the thing. But I don't think we really know what a rewatch is, so we're just throwing I think that word around. <laughs> a rewatch is we watch it, and then we make a little slideshow like I did last time. <laughs> and then we just tell them exactly what happens in the episodes. Okay. Is there episodes in the show, or is it just like a movie? I don't know. Oh. Huh? Well, maybe we won't. Maybe we will. You'll have to find out. We're not telling you who we are. So that's all I'm, I'm, David Koresh is in my head right now. That's it. Any other murder shows? No. No, no, nope. Mm. I'm excited for today's episode. Um, what is it about? Well, it's kind of ruined because I've already ruined it with their little commercial but um do you know who jared fogel is have you ever heard of jared fogel mm -hmm. do you did Cowboy you jared did you actually know that yes you knew that was his last name yes i remember when it happened and when it went down i had no idea that was his name i would have been like no i don't know <laughs> of course. wow well yes jared from subway what do you remember went down i don't even I remember he became a sensation <coughs> because mm -hmm. he was really big and he lost all this weight and he attributed it to Jared and I mean sorry to Subway and he'd be in there all the time and he would randomly go to Subways across town. He got free Subway and then turns out there's a bunch of porn on his computer. Podcast over. And he likes little boys. <laughs> <laughs> and now he's a gross ass. So that's where we're going. We're going to Subway. Okay. So get your foot long. <laughs> get your whatever else people eat at Subway. And um, let's go. Jared was, he had this insane opportunity, as we know. Okay, so Jared had this great opportunity. All he had to do was 
stand there with his giant size 60 pants, big ass monster pants, and eat Subway sandwiches, and he's a millionaire. That's all he had to do. Easy life. Easy free life. Subway. Free Subway. You got your foot. I mean, you have so many things that you can get at Subway, you know. But you know what? He ended his career the same way he started it. What? How? Trying to get into smaller pants. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the ba dum bum? So he's he's born in Indianapolis, Indiana, 1977. He loved video games. He loved eating sugar. He loved eating chips. He loved sitting around and being lazy and not doing anything, playing Nintendo, whatever. Mm. Duck, duck, go. What is that? Duck, 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 goose. Duck, duck, goose. No. No, the duck hunt. Duck hunt. Duck hunt. I love Duck Hunt. Duck Hunt, Mario Kart, whatever you play. So that's he's growing up. He's lazy. He's not doing anything. He's obviously spending a lot of time gaining a bunch of weight and getting into his size 60 pants. So he ends up going to um, Indiana University, and at this time he weighed a whopping 425 pounds. Damn. Jared's really, he's quite impressive. He's very well-rounded guy. <laughs> and on an average day, Jared would g- drink up to 15 cans of soda. Uh, I can't even drink a whole... No. I, how, how are you even that thirsty? It's because that does not quench your thirst. Oh, maybe he needs some gum. He needs some water <laughs> or coconut water. <laughs> he would ha- eat up to 10,000 calories. He wouldn't even be able to walk around campus. He, he wasn't able to walk He was up. not able to walk on campus. He could not keep up with anyone. They didn't have online classes then. They did they? not have online classes. If they did, he'd probably be sitting in his wrappers. So when New Year's came around, he was going to set a resolution, and he was going to lose some weight and change his life. Okay. Get it, Jared. So he started eating at Subway. Subway was like just... 10 steps away from where he lived. So he was like, uh, he I'm just going to pick gonna... the closest restaurant. He had to pick the closest it restaurant. Because Subway. No, was he didn't just healthy. love Subway. He was just like, that's the closest shit I can get to <laughs> without being out of breath, have to cardiac arrest. <laughs> so he goes, he starts eating two sandwiches a day. He's exercising. And then within 11 months, 245 pounds. So he didn't get surgery. I was like, he got surgery. I'm sure he did. They just ain't telling us. Wow. I don't, be- I don't believe it. But that's not what the article said. So, okay. so he literally became half the man he was. He lost literally. half. The, literally, people started to notice. He's like lost. He's like this insane weight loss. His roommate that he had at the time was like, "I'm going to write an article about you because you've lost half your weight. Who are you? I can barely see you over there. You're so skinny. Now you could probably see your penis. Did you know? I don't know where where I read this, but." <laughs> For every 35 pounds a man loses, he can gain an inch of penis. Because when they gain I do not weight, believe that. When they gain weight, it just it No, just I think that their fupa the is covering up their penis. So then the extra skin goes back down to where it should go. I do not believe <laughs> it. Look it up. Look it up right now. <laughs> I need I need you to, Listen guys. Up We're at penis. this at this podcast Bloody Happy Hour. We come to you and we bring the facts. We that spit the facts. facts. We research and all we present to you is facts. So that's why we sometimes have to stop and do some research. And we're not jewel- jewelers, but we just keep dropping gems. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I'm so funny today. Okay, while you're looking it up, his so his roommate's writing this article about him, and this article ends up on the front page of the newspaper. And then miraculously, this story is picked up by Men's Health. And then the next thing you know, there's an article called Stupid Diets That Work. And from that point, Jared becomes a phenomenon. Okay. So the executives at Subway catch wind of the story and they're like, oh my gosh, this guy's eating our sandwiches and he's losing all this weight. Look at his giant pants. And then dollar signs, just like cha-ching, money in the bank. 22 years old, Subway made a deal with him. This would change his life forever. $1.1 $1.1 million, and Jared became a celebrity endorser for Subway. I know we all remember we see the Subway commercial. Yes. We see Jared. We, we all know who Jared is. And I remember seeing on, like, Super Bowl commercials. What was one of the first ones? I can't remember, but I know he became, like, just a big. Yes. I, everybody knew who Jared from Subway. Yes. Jared from Subway. Jared from Subway. He put Subway on the map. 
I on the map. I went to Subway before that. I, I only this? went because of Jared. What year is this? I, I was going to say 2013 because I just wanted to guess a year, but... um. Oh, maybe I went to Subway before that then. No, in 19... So it was about 2000. Okay. Because <laughs> I was 13 close. years old. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was April 1999 was when Men's Health picked up the story. Oh, okay. And then he got Subway. So 2000, around the two th- early 2000s. Yeah. Three years. So he's 22 years old. He's making a million dollars. And he starts, oh, here's my answer to your question. His first ad, which showed premiered the Jared Diet, was in early 2000. Okay. So we survived the millennium. Millennium, when we thought Y2K, we thought everything was going to crash. And it didn't. And then we have Jared. So he's, we were all very excited. Yeah, he was our reward. You got through it. All these, so they have a bunch of ads that are premiering and showing. And it's just Jared. There's your average guy. And look what he did. And oh my gosh, everybody loves Jared. He's, all he's doing is eating these sandwiches. And that's all you have to do. And you can lose 500 pounds. And he was there every day. Every Every day. Every day, every meal. He was super relatable. He was super friendly. I mean, he's just a good guy. And he made his pants famous. So he ended up being in more than 300 Subway commercials. He wrote an autobiography, and he wrote a children's book. Oh. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Foreshadowing. Um, he became a motivational speaker, and he was bringing in tens of thousands of dollars for an appearance. So he, by the age of 25, he's now a multimillionaire. I mean, how do you even get that big at that? That takes a lot of work and dedication. So he obviously was a dedicated guy. Mm. So Jared had a huge cultural impact. He was grand marshalling NASCAR races. He was on uh, a Jimmy Fallon played him, like parodied him. He was in like an SNL skit playing him. He in the in two thousand two he carried the Olympic torch. What? What? And then he was the centerpiece of a South Park episode. I learned all these things. Wow. Um, he was kind of a loser back in the day, and, like, he didn't really have any friends because he was just, you know, a little overweight, and he never had a date before. But now that he's a millionaire. His penis grew. Mm-hmm, here you go. All these people coming out, and he got married, and he married a pediatric nurse. <laughs> <laughs> Did he just randomly show up at our office? I think so. <laughs> I think he... Have, oh, my goodness. I can't. With all his loose skin. <laughs> you know he had a bunch of loose skin. He they, probably had surgery. But you can't get rid of loose skin? Well, they end up having this happy and loving marriage. But was it so happy and loving? <gasps> it wasn't all roses. Let me tell you. Criticisms came because doctors and nutritionists, and I don't know why his nutritionist wife didn't say anything, but they were like, um, he's obviously just eating a thousand calories a day and he's basically starving himself. And that's oh. not healthy. That's all he was eating? That's what they were saying. They're okay. like, they're like, th- what what this diet is that you are promoting is just eating a thousand a thousand calories a day, and that's not uh, that's not how you can maintain a healthy lifestyle. Okay. So Subway had to put out these disclaimers in their ads stating, talk to a doctor first. And they had to issue a statement saying that Subway didn't endorse Jared because he was literally eating just two subs a day, skipping breakfast and working out. So they kind of had to, like, cover themselves. Okay. Okay. But it didn't matter. He was still out there doing Mm -hmm. his Subway stuff. Mm -hmm. They just had to make a little disclaimer. So, yes, they're... They, for a while, are basing their whole brand on this random guy from Indiana who lost a bunch of weight and carried around his giant pants. So, within 10 years, Jared has quadrupled Subway's revenue from $3.1 billion to $11.4 billion. What the hell? Yes. The CEO of Subway said, Jared is... Jared? I want to be a news reporter. Jared is woven into the fabric of the brand, and it is an essential part of the family. <laughs> like that. But you know what? You should probably hide your kids because something's about to happen. 
Jared has this fame and fortune, and he ends up starting this foundation called the Jared Foundation. Mm. And this was aimed to fight childhood obesity, which that's a great cause. And so, I mean, that makes sense. He obviously was. Exactly. So he would go around to elementary schools, high schools. He would educate children on eating fresh and making healthy decisions and healthy choices and all the all the things. So, I mean, this is a great cause. Kids are getting help, healthy and he's going showing off his big giant pants everywhere. He's going over the across the nation. He was on the Oprah show, he was on the Today show, he was in Super Bowl commercials, all the things. So, Sounds like he's doing positive things. I mean, I feel like he was. Mm-hmm. He was. Everything's positive so far. Is, what, what did he do? What did he do before? Did we ever know that? He was just in college. Oh, he was that young. Yeah, twenty two, okay. and then twenty five. Yeah, twenty two when was when they wrote that article, and that's when he started walking to Subway ten steps away. Wow. Yeah. So this foundation wasn't really like all that it was cracked up to be. It was more of like image campaign because, um, you know. What sells, I guess, kids sell things. So kids make you money and you can extort kids. I don't know. It's <laughs> children. So this charity, uh, it raised $650,000, but only donated 145000 to fight obesity. And it just kind of became more of a, the foundation paid more to its director than it did to actually spending money on promoting health to the kids. So it was kind of a scammy program. And it just was to enhance, like, his own Mm -hmm. image. Like, hey, look how good I look. I'm not really doing anything for these kids. I'm just trying to show up so you think that I'm great and I'm Jared and I lost all this weight. So now he's in this position to where he has access to children and he's on top of the world. He's making millions of dollars. Jared's real famous. And what do you do when you become famous? You start having affairs. Yeah. Yeah. Rich and famous. Your head Rich, gets real big. Rich, famous. Your head is bigger than your belt, and you're not used to it, so you are like, mm, I'm hot. So you have affairs. And he went on a radio show, and he met this lady named Rochelle. Now, Rochelle, remember about Rochelle. Remember. Okay. Remember her. Keep in your back pocket. Yeah. So he would go on these like romantic getaways with Rochelle and he would also hook up with other Subway store owners and other Jared groupies. Oh, because they're the best looking people. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You don't know about those owners. Jared was living his best life until 2007 when the recession hit and the economy crashed. 2008. Remember all that? That was bad. I don't know. I was in college, so I don't know what happened. But apparently, (laughs) apparently it was real bad. So Subway started to, like, feel like this whole Jared thing was starting to be played out. And they're like, oh, we're going to switch our, we got to switch it up. We got to, like, switch it up. Five dollar, five dollar foot long. And then the five dollar foot long started coming out. So he's like, that's that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. And uh, around this time, he ends up, his marriage starts to fall apart. Okay. Happens. Yeah. So once his wife realized that his foundation was a sham, and I don't know if she knew about the affairs, but she just was not having it. She knew she she had to have known. And then she also filed a restraining order against him because she said that he had become controlling and he had a mean streak. And when she filed for divorce, the reason that she gave was irretrievably broken. Mm. I mean, maybe from the affairs. I don't know. That's just, I didn't know that was a reason. I never checked a box when I got divorced. So I would have added that to, I would have added that to the, I would have been like above uh, all the above. It's like our irreconcilable differences. I know. I've never heard of this one. So (laughs) maybe that's how it is in, What's that Indiana. decision? Indiana. So post divorce, the ad so he's got divorced. He's done with these ad campaigns. He has all this free time. And so he's taking more business trips to stay yeah, active Disneyland. for the foundation. Is he going to Disneyland? Well, probably. Six Disneyland times? would probably welcome him with open arms. Here. Here's our kids. Take them. 
So he was doing hundreds of elementary school presentations across the United States. And the day before one of his big presentations, there's this guy. He goes to a bar and he's just having a drink. And he runs into this guy named Russell Taylor. So they start getting to know each other. They're like, hey, let's have a drink, whatever. And Russell Taylor has a wife and two kids. He's married, whatever. But they really hit it off. Okay. And so Jared's like, hey, why don't you come out to dinner with me? Well, don't worry. We're not going to Subway. <laughs> I can afford more than a $5 foot long. So he's like, oh, they're at dinner. And Jared's like, actually, I need help writing my speech for tomorrow for the next day. So. Yeah, so can you help me write my speech? And he was like, yeah, sure, I'll help you write your speech. And then the next day, he gives the speech, and the speech is a huge hit. And he's like, Russell Taylor, I think I'm going to hire you. Mm. Okay. So he's like, invites, starts inviting him on all these uh, different foundation trips for the Jared Foundation. Takes him to a Patriots playoff game. They had a $3,000 a night suite during this trip at the Hilton. And after this game, they went to a strip club. Like, he just met this guy, right? But I guess he really has faith in him. So they go to the strip club, and they're going in the champagne room, and they are just living their best life. And Jared is like, if he tells tells uh, Russell Taylor, if you can convince that stripper to come back to the hotel room, I'll pay you good. Okay, and Russell's like, all right. Shit. So, convince them to come back. They bring the stripper back to the room, and bing, bang, bam, they have both have sex with her, and this begins their 12-year run. Run? Relationship? Run of strippers? Run of, yes, run of what I'm about to tell okay. you about. <laughs> the beginning of a relationship. The beginning of their situationship, yeah. So, Jared went, and he hires... Taylor and Taylor becomes the executive head of the foundation of Jared Foundation of Jared still, Foundation. Yes, don't really know what it is. the two become inseparable. They're travel traveling across the country, across the world, and they're giving all these healthy eating pres- eating presentations to kids everywhere, all over. And also, Jared continued to show off his pants. <laughs> I mean, same bunk ass khakis. Same, the same pair of khakis. <laughs> Man, how did they just keep Pleated those khakis? khakis. <laughs> Pleated. They're looking good. They, they're just like he wore them the day before. I mean, wow, he was just keeping those. He pristine, pristine. So they go to Thailand. They go to Japan. They go to Indonesia. They're all over the place. Wow. Wow. They're He's partying. Not sad about his divorce at all, is he? No. And they're partying their face off. They're just doing it. How old is Russell? Did you tell us this? No, but okay. I don't know how old Russell is. Okay. But he's not a little kid. <laughs> no, Russell's a grown man. Russell, because he's married and he has two kids. And he's married, and these two kids are his stepkids. Okay. Just remember that. So they're they're in all these different countries and they're getting prostitutes and they are finding women. They're making sure these women aren't with law enforcement and they're bringing them back to their rooms. And they're once they make sure that these people aren't with law enforcement, they start asking them. They're like, hey, do you have any underage escorts that you could get for us? You know, because we just we just curious if you do. We're just curious. And. This is whenever some things start to transpire. So with both of them being out of town so much, uh, Russell Taylor, I'll just call him Russell. Russell starts to get kind of paranoid about people stealing things back at the foundation headquarters, I guess, Fogel Foundation, um, because they're gone so much. He's like, well, I'm worried about people are going to steal some things. So I'm going to put some cameras around the office just to avoid people. Okay, that's normal. Put some cameras up. But he puts hidden cameras up. I think they're, like, really hidden, like in, like, alarm clocks or something. Oh, like nanny cams. Yeah, nanny cams. So when they come back from one of their trips, Russell is, like, going through the camera footage, and he sees one of the underage interns having sex with her boyfriend on the camera in one of these rooms at the foundation. And he he goes to Jared, and he's like, okay, Jared, look. We need to do something about this. This is unacceptable. He's showing him thinking that Jared will be like, oh, yeah, she's fired. Like, you can't just have sex in the office, right? Well, J- 
Jared did not have that reaction. <laughs> <laughs> Jared was wanted to see the tape in full. We're wanted to He's the like, beginning. excuse me. <laughs> Can you uh, be kind and rewind? <laughs> Put it in slow motion. I need a little bit slower, detail. please. And so while he's showing Jared this video, Jared's like, you know what? I think we need some more cameras. Would you set up some more cameras? We need to make sure this isn't happening in any other rooms. Please, let's get to the bottom. Can you go ahead while you're at it? Put one in the office. Can you go ahead and put one in the bathroom? Put one in the kid's bedroom. I don't know that, that I don't know why they have bedrooms at the foundation, but I guess you just said, just put any bedroom that you can you put them in your own kid's bedroom? Just put them in anybody's Everywhere, bedroom. Yeah. Yeah. So at first Taylor or Russell's like, ha 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 ha. You're funny. But then but then Jared starts to buy him things. Like a house. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like like a Mercedes. Oh yeah. Hmm. And, you know, he's he's actually, not only did he buy him this house, he's paying for the house. Yes. Yeah, and he's paying for the mistake. He's paying for all the expenses. Yeah, that's a good friend. So he's officially in what is called the golden handcuffs. Mm, okay. Months later, Jared comes up to Russell and is like, hey, what about those uh, hidden cameras? <laughs> How about that? And he said, he reminded him, and this is quotes, daddy is paying for your things. Ew, David. Daddy. Ew, David. Jared Fogle called himself daddy. Mm. So Taylor is, he's locked in these golden handcuffs. He doesn't have anything else to do. He's literally the Jelaine, Jislaine, whatever you call her, Maxwell, He's the fall guy. He's stuck. He has no, I mean, he has to do it. Yeah, he's got, yeah. he's, he's got his house paid for, his car paid for. He's in these golden handcuffs and he's the one doing the dirty work. So he's like, okay. He starts putting hidden cameras, clock radios. He's putting them in bedrooms. He's putting them in different cities. He's putting them everywhere. He's just putting cameras in out. I guess it's just wherever their foundation is, the cameras are on the foundation and he's putting them in his own home. Russell's full of shit. Okay. So they're take it's capturing photos and videos of children ages six to twelve. It's this yeah. And some of the videos are he just wanted to see them unclothed. That's it. Some of them. Uh, most of them are just of watching them change. I don't, it's just disco, disgusting. I know. I don't get it. It makes, I'm, I don't have, it, yeah. So most of them are not capturing videos of any acts being performed. Okay. So it's just, we're just videoing them so we can watch them. She's a voyeur. Voyeur likes to watch. Yeah. <clears throat> so he, uh, the only per the only person that Russell showed any of these videos to was to Jared, but Jared really started really 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 started to like him, and he would review them for the best ones. But then he was like, "Um, I think that um, I think I'm I need him to be a little bit higher quality." And then he tells Russell, "Daddy needs more pictures." Put him in HD. Daddy needs need more pictures. Definition. And so he wanted to up the ante. He wanted better quality. And so he started purchasing professional spy equipment. Oh, mm -hmm. did he go to a spa shop in Miami? He did. Some I gin game? He probably Some did. He was with them. <laughs> so then now uh, he has this great equipment. So a couple of years later, it's 2010. And guess what? Maybe Jared's calmed down a little bit. He's like tired of watching these videos of little children. Mm -hmm. And gets more. he gets married again to an adult. Okay. I don't know how this grown adult, I guess they, nobody, everybody thinks he's just nice and normal. And maybe he's changing his ways. He's done with the underage escorts. Mm. No, no, he's not. No, he's mm -mm. not. <laughs> no, did you believe it for five seconds? Because mm -mm. don't. 
So even with all of these, he has all this child porn. He still wants more. He wants more. And remember, the, remember that radio show host I mentioned earlier, Rochelle. Rochelle. Yeah, he's still hooking up with Rochelle on his second marriage. Okay. Rochelle. So she's he's still doing it. I mean, he's just she, she obviously was given good, really good blowjobs. So she eventually becomes suspicious of Jared whenever Jared told her that he thought middle school girls were hot and that he was attracted to them. And then Rochelle decides to secretly start recording their conversation and baiting him further and further to see what she could get out of him. Yes, he said things to her. And so this this side note brings me to what recently came out. And if you've just heard about Jared in the news lately, yeah, yeah. it's because they have just released this documentary on the ID channel. Okay. Okay. I was and it's why. called like chasing a monster, Jared from subway, chasing, catching a monster, chasing a monster or something like catching a predator. Yeah. Well, I just want to tell you, don't go waste your time on that documentary. Mm -hmm. It is three episodes. It only needs to be one. And if you do watch it, just watch the last episode. <laughs> you don't need it. To, you don't need to watch the other two. Rochelle really is trying to be all about Rochelle. Oh, okay. She's trying to get famous. It's, I don't know how many times I learned that Rochelle was on a radio station and that she was secretly recording and she was going to make the drop when she was going to make the drop with the FBI agents and she just was trying to be a super secret spy <laughs> and she was trying to be so important and she li really was not that important at all. But, okay. but... If you go, you can watch it. Just watch the last episode. Okay. Unless you want to waste a couple more hours of your life, like I did. Then you can watch the first two. So she's going to set him up. Is, is She is. is, yes. Okay. But so she sets him up in some of the text messages that she, or she's recording the, their phone conversations. She ends up going and showing that, like, hey, FBI, I have these phone conversations. Like, we can't do anything about it because it's just audio. We don't have any proof. All we have is that he's saying this, and he could just this could just be dirty talk. Okay. Because they thought it was just like, oh, this is just y'all's dirty talk, and this doesn't prove anything. And so she got mad, but it took like 10 years from the recording of these conversations to when he finally was arrested. So she's trying to take all the credit, but really it's like other things that really... Okay. Whatever. So one of the messages, or one of the things that he says in these recordings is, I like, he says, I like all ages. That's the thing. I mean, it depends who's ready for what, you know, who's going to give you the glance. <laughs> I don't know what that means, the glance. I don't know. So she's gathering all these recordings, and she finally reaches her breaking point whenever Jared mentions to her that he asks about her children because she has two children. And he says, what if we put can't, a camera in your kid's room would they be okay with that or would you rather be would you rather it be in your son or daughter's room which one do you think would be better and this is all on this this is on the episodes yeah so this is on the i was like give me to the juicy part so she was like oh i don't know i don't know which one you would like better you know and she's obviously recording it and she doesn't know what to say and it's so gross because he's so it's Gross. just disgusting. So this whole time, oh, I kind of already, it's, this is what I just said. So after she's gets all these recordings, since it's FBI, they can't do anything about it. Well, let's bring back Russell Taylor. Okay. Russell Taylor has a, he's married. He has mm -hmm. two kids. Mm -hmm. Well, Russell Taylor and his wife, they're actually swingers. <laughs> How does it find its way in every episode? <laughs> I literally was shocked whenever I heard this. I was like, I didn't even prepare for them to be swingers. I wasn't prepared for it. But you know what? Look, man, here we are. We're back. We're back to swingers. Everything's connected to porn, and it's not my fault. This is what it is. You're here, and you're welcome. So they're obviously having sex outside of marriage. That's what a swinger is. They're introducing more people. They're having neighborhood groupie sex and blah, blah, blah. Well, he gets a little too comfortable with one of his groupie neighbor friends and he starts 
texting and they're sexting and all this stuff. Well, he offers one of these groupy neighbor friends, uh, hey, do you want to see some child porn pics? And the neighbor friend's like, excuse me? Um, not into that. And not so maybe cross the line. He also offered to send this lady pictures of images of bestiality. God. This is <laughs> So this lady calls the police and she's like, uh, you need to handle this. This is where the police get involved. So Rochelle. Mm-mm. Oh, it wasn't even Rochelle. Running even Rochelle. So it's passed off to cybercrime detectives, and there's this giant investigation in 2014 of this Russell Taylor. So the, all these text messages, all of these, um, the police actually end up raiding Russell Taylor's house. They go into his house, they raid it, they arrest him. Ah! She's aggressive. They go, they find that they have these video cameras that are in these clocks and they're in the kids' bedrooms. And initially he was like, oh, this is, there's cameras for security purposes, clearly, and uh, preventing theft. And no, these hidden cameras showed kids, his kids, undressing. And in some cases, in some cases, they said they involved sexual acts. That's all I know. According to Russell's two stepdaughters who were included on this ID documentary, they were on these cameras and they ended up finding out about this as they're older and they're like shocked and the mom was included in it too. And the kids, yeah, uh-huh, which uh-huh. was their which was their, their mom. mom uh-huh. And the kids were like they they made everything seem like it was so normal and natural like it was normal for us to drink alcohol it was normal for us to like smoke a cigarette mm-hmm. and it was it was normal for her to give him a blowjob and then come and tell us all about it uh, so she was gross too D- yes he's prob- is he's the biggest predator i feel like it was his idea to even start it he wanted to see jared's reaction <clears throat> oh that's probably true he wanted to see jared People stealing. Who gives a shit? It's, everything gets insured. So it was his idea to put it in, his idea to see Jared's reaction. So he's just of, as much of his gross ass. Uh, yes. More. Yep. Yep. They would watch, watching the kids take showers, watch them get dressed, watch, I mean. Because if that, if you weren't okay with that, the, you would draw the line at your house and your you, own family. Yeah, why are you putting, that's what I, yes. That's why you're in the FBI. <clears throat> So this guy gets taken into custody, and then he starts throwing Jared under the bus, saying he's my boss, he's the one who told me to do all this stuff, and blah, 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 like throwing him under the rug for sure. And then the little, uh, this is where it starts to blow up. News outlets are starting to hear about it. Oh, Fogel Foundation has distributed child porn. Jared comes out publicly. He's so shocked. He puts out a statement. He's saying, like, oh, I'm so shocked to learn of these disturbing allegations that Mr. Taylor's talking about and blah, blah, blah. It's just wild. It's wild. And he was, but all the while, Russell, I don't know. I don't know who was the, if it was Russell's, I I mean. I think it was Russell. So 30 days, 32 days later, after Russell gets uh, raided and arrested, July 2015, they raid Jared's house. All these kids, it was male and female kids, right? It wasn't yes. just one. Right, right. So it's very not common. Like child, po- if you're a pedophile, I don't know what's. I don't know because I don't know what I've. I've never really looked into like a case of how. I don't know how they do the. I mean, it's just like any. It's they're like a sexual sadist, right? So you. Go toward, like, if, if I was a sexual sadist, I would kill what I'm attracted to. Mm. Right? Mm. So you kill women if it's a sexual sadist. So if you're a pedophile, you're going to molest or look at porn on the sex you're attract, attracted to. Oh, he didn't. Yeah, he was attracted it's, to both. And so it's very com- he common. He just liked both. Uh, the young look. You know, yeah. like in like the, it's so gross, it's so you just we don't think about we don't go that yeah, 
I think he Jared just liked, liked the girls, and he the other guy might have liked the bull. I don't know. It's just so weird. It's just so weird. So they had they had police dogs come in who had the ability to sniff out thumb drives in the walls, SD cards, iPads, all kinds of stuff. Like because you assume that they're going to be hiding all this stuff. Yeah. And they find um, two SD cards that were Eastern European child porn. Mm. Okay. Subway immediately dropped him. Sharknado 3 dropped him. Sharknado. <laughs> um, and his wife, of course, divorced him. And he had two kids with his wife. Mm. So out of all the... Everybody was quick to denounce him. But Subway, people were very suspicious of Subway. Did Subway know? Did they not know? Did they know? How could they know? How could they not know? Had they been warned of Jared's creepy behavior? By who? Maybe former Subway owners? Mm. So it turns out back in 2004, Subway received a complaint about him that he had tried to solicit an underage girl at a Las Vegas promo event in 2008. And then one of the Florida Subway franchisees told the CEO of Subway at the time, so like an owner of the uh, mm -hmm. a Florida Subway, told Jeff Moody, who was yeah. the CEO at the time, about Jared and his disturbing comments about kids. Well, then Moody went on to say that there was nothing that implied any sexual behavior about Jared Fogle. But interestingly enough, this franchise owner, this this Florida lady, Cindy Mills, turns out she's also having an affair with Jared. <laughs> or Jared's having an affair with her, however you say it. So he's over here with Rochelle, and he's over here with Cindy. And once, once... Cindy was hooking up with Jared. Jared started texting her about possibly having sex with a 16-year-old. And some of these text messages were of about them or him meeting up with one of her underage cousins. And he would also constantly text her about uh, wanting to get some underage girls and call girls and wanted them for sex. And I guess he just, I guess he just like will talk about it and just maybe, just maybe they're interested. Oh, maybe they'll, maybe they'll provide me with whatever. But is it raining? It sounds like it. So I, I don't know. I, don't, Jared's second wife, the new one, claims that Subway was aware of some of these reports against, against him, even though they say that they didn't know. Okay, I can see like. Maybe shunning one report, but multiple, that's a pattern. That's I mean, you know all these executives are shady anyways. I mean, yeah. look at Epstein and all the people who are doing everything. I don't know what... Money rules. Yeah, you get away with anything. Anything is terrible. So, yeah. It's probably why they're slowly cutting their tides anyways. <clears throat> they knew. Yeah. And now a word from our sponsors. Hi, this is Sarah. And I'm Carter. And this is Some of Our Thoughts. We're two Southern sommeliers, and we want to share everything we love and know about wine. We started hanging out during quarantine and cooking and drinking and listening to music, and we just thought this would be a great way to bring everything we know to you guys. We will make wine knowledge and food pairings easy and approachable. So put on your favorite vinyl, grab your favorite glass of wine, tune into our show, and let's have some fun. Wine, wine and vinyl. vinyl. <laughs> so check us out on roguemedianetwork.com or wherever you get your favorite podcast. We'll be talking about a lot. Zach. And I'm Mike. 
and we have a fantastic new podcast to tell you about. Bros, Foes, and Heroes. It's the two of us looking into the world of comics, breaking down some characters that you may have never heard of, and some that are just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, so Zach comes up with a character each time, and uh, I go into it just completely blind. I don't know who this person is or what their abilities are or anything, and, and basically I guess we kind of go over their origin story and just some of the ridiculous stuff that maybe, especially Golden Age stuff. Oh, Golden yeah. Age stuff is always the best, and we will make sure to highlight all of the shenanigans and just absolute weirdness yeah. of everything. Yeah, that's right. So subscribe today and uh, follow us on Instagram at Bros Bros Heroes. And if you don't, I know where you live. Not really, but please subscribe. <laughs> bros and Bros and Heroes gonna tell you about Bros and Bros and Heroes gonna tell you about Nine one one. What's your emergency? Do you hear that? It's coming from the house. It's coming from inside the house. Uh, do you mean? Could it be? The Bolter House. New from Rogue Media. Two haunted hotties talking about haunted places. Every episode, we dive deep into the darkest places and give you a bit of history. We're getting spooky in all the right places. You've gobbled your last ghoul. Follow along for the craziest and spookiest stories with Debbie's Dark Tourism. The Stanley Hotel, Winchester House, The Alamo, Hotel Monte Vista, and more spooky places. Find us at the underscore Poltergals. P-O-L-T-E-R-G-A-L-S. Look over your shoulder. It's us, the Poltergals. Wherever you consume the podcast, you can find us there. So Jared is finally arrested. He's charged after the raid. He pleads guilty to the allegations. He didn't even try to pretend. Okay. So, um, Good. yes, guilty to the allegations that he paid for sexual acts with children and receive child porn. He pled guilty to both of those things. How disgusting. Russell Taylor ended up pleading guilty in a plea agreement because he gave evidence over helping to convict Jared. So he, I don't think he got less of a sentence though because he was originally going to get 30 years, but with his plea agreement, it was knocked it down to 27. Russell. Russell. For producing and distributing child porn, Jared had a $15 million fortune that would eventually be wiped out, paying $1.4 million in restitution to the 14 victims. Damn. These, so, the pro- these were the people on the video, but not the prostitutes. I think he- it's a mixture. Okay. I think because he kept wanting to, he kept soliciting like the underage escorts uh-huh. and... Then it was the underage people who were videoed, maybe people at the foundation. So that it was they came up with fourteen total, and then his second wife was the one she would take seven million dollars in the divorce. Jared was eventually sentenced to fifteen years in prison. He'll serve thirteen years before he gets parole, and he should be free as soon as twenty twenty eight. So Jared is over here crying out his little subway eyeballs when he's eating his very last Subway sandwich and holding on to those giant pants one last time, but this bitch is heading to prison. And, oh, prison pen pals. He has prison pen pals. Ooh. In one of his letters, it says, he wrote to his little lady, pen pal, so when do you think you will have sex next? If you do, will it be okay if you tell me about it? <laughs> that would be a huge turn on for he's, me. He's a pervert. <laughs> he's a, so he is definitely a pervert. And do you think Subway knew about it? I wrote questions down. Do you think Subway knew anything about it? And, um, oh, I have a food for thought, but that's, do you think Subway knew anything about this? I, yeah. 
Probably so, but I don't think I would think if they knew they would be like, stop making it so obvious or don't talk about it. I would think, yeah, be smart about your shit. If you're going to be do dirty. I feel like maybe they were like people came into them and told them stuff and they probably get told stuff like this all the time. I would think it would just more like he's buying prostitutes and and he's requesting underage prostitutes, right? And they're and so like, then it's uh, because oh, it's a prostitute. Maybe that's not a big deal. Yeah, I don't think that they would have known the extent of like all the video, video and the cameras. Yeah, and stuff. they probably didn't. So they're like, because we want to miss millions of dollars over, you know, just this pros, you know, a couple of prostitutes. So maybe in that aspect. Yeah, I wonder if he is even a pedophile just a gross pervert because he probably did without nobody wanted he's like incel ish for the first 20 what three or four years of his life yes nobody wanted to touch him no yeah so now that he had money and power and fame and people wanted him he was going to dabble in any and i thought you were going to tell me that him and russell got down dirty Uh, you know they probably did because if that first night they had that prostitute and they both had sex with her but i don't understand the why do you have to go for little kids so that's what I want to know. The first video was an intern, right? Uh huh. And I know that having was having sex with her boyfriend. Mm-hmm. I think Jared is how old at this? Like he's still college age ish, right? So to it's it's I don't want I'm not okay in any of this, y'all. But if it was a seven year old girl, to me that's a little kid. If this right. is a seventeen year old college student. That's got a body like she's a Kardashian or something, you know. Um, then I think that looks different. I think that's more pervert ish versus pedophilia. Now Russell's ass, he's the true pedophile because he wanted to see his stepkids, mm. all age kids, mm. and it was his idea to video it so that he can look at it. And then in a moment of um, what's it called? Horniness with mm-hmm. your swinger friend. You want to bring that out like you would bring out a toy or porn, right? Mm-hmm. Not let's watch this porn. Let's look at these young kid videos. Mm. So I think it turned Russell on. Jared was going to take anything that he can get because he never had it. It'd been big for forever. Like, I don't know. I'm not taking up for Jared at all. But I think these two gross people that find each other, this is the shit that they can do. April, you're not a pastor, but you keep bringing the word. (laughs) I'm pun daddy today. (laughs) This is crazy. I just, I just don't know where and how they were putting all these cameras in, like just in random people's houses. I know, because that's what it said in the documentary. It was like, and they just put these cameras in bedrooms. And I was like, whose bedrooms? Where did you, what do you mean bedrooms? And the only bedrooms that I saw was the Russell guys, but kids' bedrooms. Yeah. So unless they were, they had bedrooms at the foundation (laughs) headquarters, I was like, I think they were just like in the bath, like maybe there is a gym and changing rooms. And and then, I don't know where else they would stash them, but mm, 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 I think it was a lot. I think he was mainly, I think Jared really liked, the, but he also, when he was talking to Rochelle, her kids were like 10 and 11. Mm-hmm. And he was just wanting, he was wanting her to put cameras in her kids' oh, bedrooms. Yeah, that's right, that's right. <clears throat> oh, I don't know. They're both gross asses. Poor Rochelle. She tried to be DTF. She Rochelle, tried. you tried and, you know, you and good really, effort. She should have been like, I told y'all so. Ten years ago, I told y'all so. I think you she did. I think so she's kids. in a wheelchair now on this documentary. Poor thing. <laughs> Poor Rochelle. And her, she said that her kids abandoned her, and I don't know why. Her kids got mad at her and stopped talking to her. Because they didn't get none of that restitution money. <laughs> you should put the camera up so I could get <laughs> yeah. so I could get that some of that money. Yeah, the pastor, we keep speaking the word, girl. <laughs> okay, so in January, I saw randomly on my um, notices that came up, maybe like TMZ, mm. that Subway is exploring selling out 
this was happening this January. So I'm wondering <gasps> when that documentary come out. And then it just came out this like last week. So they must have knew that it was coming out. So they were thinking about selling for ten billion, and was exploring what? selling options. They did a press release. Oh, they're gonna be pissed this at came us. Out February fifteenth, twenty twenty three. Because that wait, that's when they this. that's when they did that. That's when they said that. They I saw it in January ish, but this are this just what I'm reading on News Nation. This was dated February fifteenth, twenty twenty three. Oh yeah, no, the documentary literally came out like March sixth or something. So they knew it was coming out, um, <sighs> and then oh, oh my gosh, and then they're like, people are gonna go on their podcast and talk about it. Yeah, how bad did somebody talk about it? I mean, how how bad was Subway talked about in the documentary? I mean, it's Jared from Subway, so it, it about well, I meant not that about them covering it up. Oh, mm, a little bit here and there, just kind of hinted at. I, it. No, it was that wasn't. I think it was just that it was that it was Jared from Subway. Mm -hmm. I don't. It wasn't a big. It wasn't a big thing about Subway knowing about it and all the scandal of that. No, it was just the fact that it was Jared. And if you if you're not old like us, because I mean Jared was a big yeah deal. I don't know why he, he just because he he kept popping up everywhere. He it, with his giant ass pants. Mm -hmm. Jared and his pants were all over the place. Yeah, yep. And yeah, I mean he was on the Super Bowl commercials. He was on Oprah. He was on Today. I mean, he was everywhere. This was saying that they're losing. Um, they're losing a lot of popularity and money. Due to all the other sandwich shops opening up. Uh-huh. So, oh, they're switching how they slice their meat? Um, well, and then think <laughs> of all the no, think of all the, the bad stuff that's come out. Because I would prop, I, I always loved Subway and I always loved their tuna. Then it came out, it's not real tuna. Their chicken wasn't real chicken. And they were probably like the only big sandwich shop like that for a while, right? Yeah. And then you had like... Quiznos, and now you got Witch Witch, and now you got all these other, I don't know, sandwich. Jimmy John's. Yeah, Jimmy John's. So now they came out with, um, they're doing actual sandwiches. So they want you to go in and order, like, from a menu instead of a have it your way. Remember, before it was have it your way. You just tell them whatever you want, and they put it on. Toasted, yeah, you go. Toasted. Yeah. yeah. So they're trying to move away from that. And just have, oh, take this turkey bacon club or just do this and move away from making it your own way. And I was like, are they trying to cut back on condiments or whatever? But no, it, they're trying to look like the other sandwich chains so that because they were doing better than what they were. But maybe that's all an excuse to get in front of this damn documentary and they couldn't sell it. <laughs> Preach, Pastor, preach. I was like, is Shaq going to buy it? <laughs> oh, my Before gosh. I thought about, you know, he just buys random stuff. Oh, yeah. <sighs> wow. Good story. <clears throat> random story. I wonder so how random. I so random. It was so random. And it's uh, and it's only in the news because our documentary just came out. Yes. That's how I even. Yes. That's how it came up in my. I didn't even know. I didn't even know he was a pedophile. I think I remember hearing about it, yeah, but I didn't really know about it, and that it was so so like intense. And yeah, it just came out on March sixth. Oh, it's on Discovery Plus too. Okay, but I I watched it on Hulu. Wow! Mm -hmm. Wow! 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 But I mean, you listen. You go watch it if you want. We could. We should have played the trailer for him. Probably still can. can go watch it. Okay. Um, okay, that is good. That That's is good. it. No murders, but still some true Yeah, crime. still a little swinger at, swingers in there, but that was unexpected. A little pedophilia. Yeah, pedophilia, no blood. Got a little bit of comedy in there. Love, love, love. Okay, y'all, if you love this episode, send it to five of your friends. And before you leave, do not forget to go rate us, review us, and subscribe to us. And if you have a favorite story that we have not covered thus far, send us something. Send it. Do I send it. We got it. We, we like. Stuck. We need to get inspired sometimes. So yeah. this is kind of. I got inspired because I. I like to do the. What's in, What's happening now? I guess. What's happening now? Yeah. 
Except for that was 2000. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> it's only happening to you now because you just not found out. Yep. About it. Yep. <laughs> love, love, love. It is. That does seem like yesterday, though. Yeah. Okay. Y'all, this is it. Don't forget to... Uh, stay aware. Stay alive. And always be DTF. And also NTA. Never trust anyone. Bye, y'all. Goodbye. DTF is down to, to find. Down to find. Or is it? This has been a Rogue Media Podcast. 